Brothers and sisters, welcome to My King Thoughts. Please like, share, and subscribe to this, this channel. The title to this is Just Run. I'm going to read out of um, 39 verse 2. Um, the title is Joseph and Potiphar's Wife. The Lord was with Joseph, so he prospered, and he lived in the house of the Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, he, Joseph found favor in the eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and entrusted his care in everything he owned. From time he he put him from the time he put him in charge of the household and all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was was everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care with Joseph in charge. He did not have concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome, and after a while, the master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to bed with me. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit is very attractive, very, very attractive, and it draws all sorts of attention and people from you. Your job is to use discernment and determine what's from God and what's from the devil, and that's pretty clear. There's no way that God will send someone else's spouse to, 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 um, to tempt you. There's no way. There's nothing that anyone can say to me that a, a husband and wife that are in a, in a marriage, living in the same household, um, building, building a relationship, a family, that God is going to send one of those spouses out of that household to do anything other than be a faithful wife and husband there's nothing that tells me that but verse 8 says but he refused with with uh, with me in charge he told her my master does not concern himself with anything in this house everything that he owns is entrusted to my care no one is greater in this house than i am my master has withhold nothing from me except you because you are his wife now then i could do how could i do such a wicked thing against god and though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. Just say no. Just say no, brothers and sisters. Just say no. Listen, the devil has some very crafty and smooth words that he's gonna he's gonna be able to hit some some tender spots in your heart that that you've always wanted to hear. He's going to entice you with the things of the world like he did Jesus Christ on the mountain. He's gonna tempt you. That's his job. Your job is to just say no and flee. That's your job. Don't say no and then stand there or accept a phone number from someone. Don't say no and have a drink with an individual or have these sidebar flirtatious conversations. Just say no and flee. Verse 11 says, one day he went into the house and attended to his duties because that was his job. He still had a job to do and none of the household service was inside. She caught him by, by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and he ran out of the house. Just say no and flee. 2 Timothy, verse two, um, 2 Timothy 2 verse 22 says, so flee from your youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. Along with those who are called um, with the Lord with pure heart. So we're supposed to actually really be in, in, in the same circle of each other because we know we wouldn't attempt, we won't tempt each other in that manner because, because our hearts are pure. But Joseph was in a household that not necessarily was a godly household, so he had no other choice but to be there because he had a job to do. But what he did was right. He fleed, he ran. And so in verse 13 says, when she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and had ran out of the house, she called her, called her household servants. Now all of a sudden they're around. Look, she said to them, his Hebrew, this Hebrew has, um, has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. The devil the accuser, the accuser. Women have been making up stories about men forever. And, and men have been doing the same thing. 
You know, because because I don't want you or because I don't want what you want or your your view or your expectations of what I want um, is different. All of a sudden you want to make me the bad guy. It happens in marriages. It happens in, in relationships and in friendships. It happens in business ships. It happens all over the place where you want to throw salt on someone's name all because you didn't get your way. But God says, um, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Just run. God is going to protect you. Just run. They can slander your name. They can say whatever they want about you. Just run. And as we read more of the Joseph story, we understand that God got our back. In verse 16, she kept his cloak beside her until her master came home, till his master came home. Then she told his told him this story. The Hebrew slave you brought to, to me makes tried to make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She, she's very consistent with the story. She, she's very consistent in which she makes sure that the servants was on her side, her husband's on her side. So now she has people that are against them. And it's easy to, to convince your little circle your side of the story is right. It's so easy to convince the people that are close to you that you did nothing wrong. It's easy. But what, it, what it's not easy is convincing God because he sees all. He sees all, all sides of the story. And so Revelation um, 12 verse 10, the uh, Satan is the accuser of our brother. And I, I, I want to say something right quick. I know part of her wife is, is saying this stuff, but we got to look beyond the human being aspect of the accuser and people that slander our names because it's the enemy that is using them. Because it, it's, it's, it's the enemy, it's the, it's the, the prince of polities of this, this crazy universe that we live in, the, the Satan and his demons that we fight against, not the flesh and blood. So we have to keep that in mind. It's okay to be disappointed in Parliament's wife, but really, she's only doing the will of her father, who is who is Satan, and, and, and she's the puppet. Verse 19 says, when his master heard of the story of his wife saying, this is how your slave treated me, he burned with anger. So Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. Joseph is in jail now. Joseph has been through so much in his life, his brothers wanting to kill him, putting him in the hole, dad, dad not having confidence in him and talking, choosing him last and just not seeing his value. But through it all, Joseph never lost his faith. Through all these trials and storms and tribulations and acts against him, he still not have not lost his faith and he trusted God. So, but, but, but while Joseph was in, in there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all, th all those held in prison and was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in every, in whatever he did. You know, Trust and believe there's something about everything you touch is blessed. Even when you're going through trials and tribulations and storms, everything you touch is, is blessed. I'm a, I'm a testament of, of going through so many storms, but every, every encounter I have is blessed. Everything I touch is blessed. My children are blessed. My, my career is blessed. My friends are blessed. Everything I touch is blessed. My finances are blessed. My heart, is, my heart and my mind is blessed. Everything you come encounter with is blessed because you know why? You trust in the Lord. And when you stay focused, even in your trial, even, even being locked up in the prison in your mind, if you stay focused on God, he will protect you and everything will be successful. Joseph's favor in the Lord and his faithfulness protecting him as the Lord was with him and he was also with us. He's also with us in our trials. The lions, like Daniel and the lion den, God was with them. If God is for us, who can be against us? Romans 8 verse 31 says, who can be against us? So flee from temptation. Fleeing from temptation means we recognize it as an enemy and we go the other way with no hesitation or compromise. Joseph refused to engage in an adulterous affair. He knew not only it was a sin against God, but himself. 1 Corinthians, um, 1 Corinthians 6 uh, verse 18 says, flee from sexual morality 
Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexual moral person sins against his own body. We don't understand that every um, sinful sexual act is against us. Soul ties. Um, you have um, all these these um, these diseases, pregnancies, these unwanted babies, these everything that we commit outside the body, playing these little sexual games, sleeping with every Tom, Dick, and Harry, and Susie, and, and Lisa, we think that it's okay, but it's not okay. Because it, it's a sin against us. It's not a sin against anyone else. Yes, it, it definitely is not good in the kingdom of God. And yes, we're going to have to pay for those sexual sins. But ultimately, we pay for it ourselves. People can't seem to be in monogamous relationships anymore, and it's sad. It's sad because... Every time you're with someone, that soul tie, that whatever you, you, you deposit and take out, take away an attachment with each person you're with, and you have so many of that inside you, it changes your, it really, and I feel like it changes your DNA in, in all honesty. It changes your personality and your character. Flee from sexual morality. And 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 says, a moral person, uh, well, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with temptation, he will also provide a way out of escape. He will make sure it's, you can bear it all. Listen, no one can ever tell me that they committed a sin, uh, a, an adulterous sin, or, or cheating on their, their loved one, and they didn't have a way out. You, 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 you went into the situation by opening the door, so that door opens for you to, to run out as well. You, you could have said no at the very start of exchanging the phone number, but you didn't. You could have, you could have told that person that you are a faithful husband or wife or a boyfriend or girlfriend. You could have told that person that and fleed from them and stopped all conversation with them. I believe that if you're entertaining conversations with someone that you know that has a sexual tension and desire to you, I believe that you're playing with Satan and you're not fleeing. You're standing in the midst of right in the grasp of Satan. So when something happens, an argument, disagreement, you are in the snare of Satan. That's part of his devices to keep you, keep you in bondage and keep you on this tight rope to where you can't go anywhere. So I say flee from Satan. Say stop these conversations and these exchanging these numbers and being in places where you know that you're going to be tempted or that person is going to want desire something more than what you're willing to give them. Because eventually you're going to break because we're not as strong as Satan. We're only as strong as, as, as us in, in, the, in the protection and under the umbrella of God. But if you're un, under the protection of God, then you already know you should flee and you shouldn't be doing these things. So I say again, just run. Whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, whether it's sex, what, what gambling, whatever it is, pornography, whatever it is, just say no. Flee from it. You have a good one.